Today, product uh, management students, I hope you are fine and uh, perfectly in uh, physical uh, shape, emotionally, psychologically, and physically, and of course, spiritually. Today's lesson is about module number three, or topic number three, and the title is about Competitor Analysis My question is this Why should an entrepreneur analyze, study his competitor? Why not study his company? And why is there a need? to study the competitor. I hope some of you have an answer about this one. In in the in marketing management the foundation of marketing management is the three C's. Any one of you who knows these different C's? So the company, the customer, and the competitor. Actually, this is an equilateral triangle. So, we talk about the company, we talk about the competitor, and in today's module, we talk about the competitor. The, each of the C's have different objectives. The objective of the company is to have revenues and of course more revenues and sales so that profit is also uptrend. The more sales you have, the more money that when you deduct your fixed and variable expenses there is still a profit margin that will be left for the entrepreneur because when revenues is equal to expenses therefore the profit is break even so, the objective of the company is profit. The objective of the second C, which is the customer, is to get the value out of his money. And, of course, the customer is going to uh, buy or purchase a certain product or a service to a company that the customer will think that will solve his problem that the customer will think that this is the solution to his concern, he or she will buy to that uh, entrepreneur or company. So it's the value out of the money, the benefits he will get out of the product or the service. So that's value. And of course, the competitor, the last C. This com competitor has a, an objective also and of course uh, the competitor's objective is to outperform the competition because uh, if he's going to eliminate this competition and another competition what is left is one two three So, the objective of the competitor is to outperform you. 
It's like a war. That's why in the succeeding slides, competitor analysis is associated to the art of war based on Sun Tzu, a Chinese tactician and practitioner during the Middle Ages. So you need to analyze your competitor in order for you to attain your objective, which is profit and revenues. Because if you are here, five competitors, and the sales is going to be divided among the competition, and of course, if you are unique like this one, you have the differentiation and you are not the follow the leader perspective, you are going to outperform your competition. That's why according to Philip Cutler, the marketing guru from Harvard University, competitive advantage can be earned through differentiation or what makes you different from your competition and low cost. So that's why in this diagram or graphical picture, the four incandescent bulbs are busted and you are still energized, you are still active, or maybe you can try to forecast this as you are unique from your competition. Therefore, the job of the entrepreneur, the owner of the business, whether you are a micro base, small, medium enterprises, it is your responsibility to analyze the competition. So I will repeat, the foundation of marketing is basically the three C's, the company, the customers, and the competitors. And all of these three C's have its own objective and intention. The subject deals with analysis. When we say analysis, it means that you are doing a research. It is a research. And doing a research is not a simple task. It is not very economical. Sometimes, or most of the times, Multinational corporations, international corporations, global corporations would hire a third-party provider to do their research semi-annually. Why, sir? Why, doc? Because they have to understand the customers and they have to understand the competitor. Because your marketing strategy is based on the marketing mix. The marketing mix have four P's, the price, the product, the place, and promotion. So this marketing mix, the synonym is your marketing strategy. However, there is a prerequisite in order for you to plan strategically your marketing strategy or marketing mix. And that is, you should do a customer analysis. You should do a customer analysis and a competitor analysis. So in other words, in other words, I am going to formulate 
the algebraic equation so that you can understand what is how to compute or how to arrive to a marketing strategy. First, you have to do a competitor analysis. You have to do a customer analysis. And that is equal to your marketing strategy. Doc question. Yes, go ahead. What if I only do competitor analysis? If you only do this, that's fine. But you cannot make a comprehensive and strategic marketing strategy. So in other words, you have to do both in order for you to formulate a strategic marketing strategy. If you only do customer analysis, you cannot do again a strategic marketing strategy. Because the objective of the company is profit and revenues or sales. And in order to get to increase your revenues, you must have more customers to buy in your product or your service. But if you are five, you have four competitors like the uh, chart or the graphical chart, it's very obvious that sales are distributed among the five. But if you are unique and you differentiate against the competition, therefore, more revenues will come in to your company. So, therefore, we can conclude that competitor analysis is just a pre-requirement for marketing strategy because another requirement is to conduct a customer analysis. For so, in other words, for today's lesson, we will study how to do a competitor analysis. It's like baking a, you know, baking a cake. What are the ingredients that you need to bake a cake? Of course, the, the product, cake, uh, should be delicious, not so sweet, just, you know, 50-50, so that everybody can consume your cake and everybody will be happy. Let's proceed to the next slide, which is the learning objective. We have two learning objectives. So, at the end of the lesson, students will be able to know the essential components, the relevance of analyzing com competitors. And I mentioned it to you in the previous slide that you need to analyze your competitors to outperform them and to derive a marketing strategy on how to kill your competitors for that matter because this is a war. The second learning objective is to apply techniques, strategies, concepts in gathering, interpreting, or analyzing, and forecasting or predicting competitors' data. So, in learning objective number two is that if you have a data that were collected from the different competitors, that data has to be processed. You have to gather this one and then there is uh, analyzing and predicting the data so that this data has to be turned into another process or byproduct which is information. And once you have the information, 
you are going to use the information for your business decision making. Example is, are you going to produce or are you going to buy? Are you going to rent or are you going to own? So, you need data so that you can process it to be an information so that this information can be your aid, can be a support, can be a, a leverage for you to make a sound business decision making. So these are the two learning objectives that we need to accomplish. So this business or entrepreneurship can be compared to war. And a war is very expensive and very dangerous, very risky because it entails the loss of lives and properties. And of course, uh, if two nations is at war, a lot of stakeholders are going to be affected. Especially the economy, the social, the political, economic, technological, the legal, and the environment. However, in marketing, competitor analysis can be compared to a war. Of course, you have to kill your enemies. Okay? As we all know, in wars, it is necessary to better you know your enemy, you understand your enemy, you know the weakness of your enemy, what are the strengths of your enemy? Where is the enemy strongly located? What are the vulnerabilities of our enemies? What are the weak points of our enemies? In numbers, are they large, huge compared to our numbers? How does the enemy think? Where can we open the offensive so that there is less risk on our part? So competitor analysis is basically the foundation is research. If you don't know the answer to a query or question, you have to research. But if you know the answer, there is no need to research because research is very expensive, time-consuming. So, again, in the transaction of the business, it is like war because you have a lot of competitors. And in order for you to outperform the competitor, the requirement is to research your competitors. According to a Chinese military tactician, military expert, during the medieval, medieval times, San Tzu, know yourself, know your enemies. Again, if we are going to translate this into the language of an entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, you must know your company and you must know your competitors. And according to the principle of San Tzu, if you are ignorant of both your enemy and yourself, then you are a fool and certain to be defeated in every battle. Meaning to say, if you don't know your enemy and you don't know your strength and weaknesses, therefore, you will be defeated. Same is true 
in running a business organization, if you don't know your competitors and you don't know your company's strength, opportunities, threats, and weaknesses, your company will be will undergo bankruptcy. Another principle of Sun Tzu is if you know yourself but not know your enemy, for every battle won, you will suffer a loss. Meaning to say, if you know, if you do not know your competitor, you only know your company, so it will be very expensive on your part. Because maybe you are just the follow the leader. Whatever your competitor is offering the market, you are going to copy-paste the offering. Therefore, you are not the leader, but you only follow the leader. You just imitate. And some foreigners say that Filipinos are good imitators. You see that before the pandemic, milk tea is a fad. However, because of the competition, because the, the new entry, no, according to Porter's Five Forces, no, the threat of new entry is not high. Anybody who has a certain amount of investment can go and open a milk tea business. However, if you are 10 milk tea business owners and you don't differentiate yourself and you don't know the strength and weaknesses of your competitors, it will be very expensive on your part. On the third variable, if you know your enemy and yourself, you will win every battle. So in other words, we can say that if you know your competitor and you know your company, it means to say that this is a winning formula. But what I am saying is this. In the foundation of marketing, you must not only know the two C's. You must know your company, you must know your customer, and you must know your competitor. In order for you, to win every battle so that you can craft, tailor fit, custom made a very strategic marketing plan that will meet the objective of satisfying the value for the customers. For the company, it will provide you more revenues and more profit and you can outperform your competition. Why do you need to continuously be vigilant to your competitors in terms of watching them, monitoring them, evaluating them, analyzing them? Why is there a need? Really, analyzing our competitors, we can predict our next step we can exploit their weaknesses. We can undermine their strengths. We meet customers' needs and wants better than your competitors can. So in other words, this is on the part of the customer analysis. And this one is on the part of competitor analysis. And the one who is analyzing the competitor is the company or owner of the business. However, in order for you to craft and design the best strategic and competitive marketing plan, you must know the company, know your 
weaknesses and strength, know your competitor, and know your customer. So that you can craft and design a very strategic and competitive marketing strategy. This one, you can see, is that on the right side, there is a primary data and there is secondary data. And there are some guiding questions. Who are they? What are the competing product features? What do they want? What is their current strategy? Followed by differential, competitor advantage, analysis, that is, who has the competitive product advantage? And what are they going to do? So these, are, these guiding questions are the data that you need. Because you are analyzing, you are researching, and the first step to research is design your research objective. After doing a research objective, what do you want to accomplish? You must identify your research problem. And there, after doing those things, what sources of data do you need? Are you going to use secondary data? And what are the primary data that you need? So in other words, when researching, you need secondary data and you also need the primary data. Sir, what's the difference between primary and secondary data? The difference is this. Primary data can be taken or can be extracted through our sales force. It could be from suppliers, it could be from customers, it could be from our internal employees, it could be from our business consultants, or probably in the finance, financial institutions like banks. However, though we know that these are the sources of primary data, how are you going to get the primary data coming from these different entities? There are two types, of course. You can do a quantitative research or a qualitative research. Because both types or methods of researches will need sources coming from primary data. Are you going to do an in-depth interview or a focus group discussion to the sales force, to the suppliers, to the customers, to the employees, to the consultants, to the investment bankers? Or are you going to conduct a questionnaire survey that these sources is going to accomplish answering whether that will be offline or online. And therefore, if you have sources of primary data, there are also sources of secondary data. And the sources of secondary data or information are from official gazettes, annual reports of company, government reports, promotional literature, patent filings, trade associations and publications, customer communications, industry research surveys, magazines, internet. No? The internet was not included here, but ebooks, no? journals, articles, these are secondary data that were not indicated here. So these are the two sources of information, primary and secondary data. Of course, uh, you are going to execute first secondary data. Like, for example, how to, how to outperform my competitor. So I'm going to, maybe the competitor is 
more on milk tea example. So you will study and read sources coming from secondary data how to uh, make a very competitive and economical milk tea. Where is this going to be located? So you need some secondary data information. Another sources of secondary data, internet is now mentioned, news releases, publication, marketing and advertising, internal sources, customer communication, business journal. There you go. Okay. So there are also other sources, ads, trade shows, plant tours, reverse engineering, test markets, hiring key employees. And of course, in every approaches, we should always remain professional and ethical. Now, if you are going to uh, do some of these, these are unethical approaches. Aerial reconnaissance, buying stealing trash, bribing printers, running phony once ad, snoopy, snooping on airplanes. So, these are unethical approaches. But what is very important is you know where you are going to get your primary and secondary data and what methodology of research are you going to implement, whether that is quantitative or qualitative. Okay. So, who are my competitors? Of course, you have to categorize who are your competitors. And the level of competition could be a product form. Doc, what is a product form? An example is you have, uh, you have the same market segment uh, and then your features and specifications are probably similar. Uh, a, a, a typical example is Diet Coke versus Diet Pepsi. Both of them are uh, low in calories, so you have similarities. And that example is an example of a product form. And the next example is, or another level, is product category. Uh, a product category is based on a product or could be services with similar features. Like for example, colas versus other colas like for example a diet regular coke fruit flavored etc so this is product category why do we need to understand the levels of competition it is important to understand whether you are a product form or a product category so that when you do a competitor analysis, it should be apples to apples. Not apples to orange or apple to grapes, but you are trying to analyze a different category, the same fruit, no? which is apple. If apple, apple, oranges, oranges. Okay. So if you have a regular Coke and a regular Pepsi, that is product form. Okay. Uh, if you are comparing, uh, you know, same feature like regular Coke, regular Pepsi, okay, that could be another uh, product form, no? But if you want to, you know, uh, compare like, for example, uh, product category uh, like uh, Coke and probably 7-Up, uh, uh, the flavoring one is... Uh, one is a Coke is seven up. It's mental. Uh, there is a mental taste now, not unlike a regular Coke. Another uh, category or level will be generic. Market is defined as consisting of those product and services fulfilling the same needs. No, soft drinks versus juices juices versus bottled water, etc. And you also have in terms of budget, no? uh, you are competing for, let's say, uh, the same amount. 
dollars budgeted can be spent on vacation ring money so you are talking of the a form of budget same amount no? that is another form so in other words when you are going to make a competitor analysis you must be sure that you are comparing apples to apples in terms of forms like for example uh, you know product category the form budget and uh, the generic no okay we have one two three four the outer uh, the outer circle is budget competition like for example you want to compare food versus entertainment so uh, this is more on the generic aspect the next is ah sorry this is the budget aspect the outer circle is the budget okay the next circle will be the generic form like for example you have coffee bottled water wine tea beers juices so generic and then uh, on the other circle you have product category this could be lemon lime fruit flavored colas regular cola diet lemon uh, colas no? and in that inner nucleus you have the product form no? like for example the competition is diet uh, colas you have diet pepsi diet coke diet right cola no? so you must basically understand those forms which were uh, you know presented in graphical format and what you see outside is the generic and what is you see inside is the product form and outside that is the product category and you have the generic and you have the budget and there are examples here so this will be your guide when you are trying to compare apples to apples okay when it comes to product features no? you have a product features matrix no? you have two competitors competitor a competitor b of whatever brand whatever brand so you list down the features and you try to do a gap analysis of what features is available to you if you are competitor or, or you, you are the company you want you have uh, you are three major players in the market so you have two competition you are studying two of your competitors of you know different brand name so you try to list down all your features of the product okay and you try to do a gap analysis of where you where the competitor is missing or where the gap is so you must know the features of your product okay let's say for example uh, the features of a cell phone let's say camera memory uh, what else camera memory security price uh, let's say uh, one of the features could be uh, warranty after sale service okay so you, you list down all those features or some specifications so that uh, you have to do a gap analysis here so that you can understand the strength and weaknesses of your competitors here is 
uh, an application of the product feature matrix analysis. We have here 1, 2, 3, 4. A good bacteria, type of bacteria, the benefits, product volume. And there are how many competitors? There are three competitors. You have Chamito, Bear Brand, Yakult. Okay. So there is a, uh, now there is a fill in the blanks. But this time it's more on the narrative. So in good bacteria, 4 billion live good bacteria. This one, Yakult, has many good bacteria count. In the type of bacteria, all of them are lactobacilli, but competitors 1 and 2, the bacteria is 40s, but yours is different. So here, you can understand that Yakult bacteria might be your differentiation. You have a strength, another strength, with comes to benefits uh, and enhances it enhances the natural resistance to intern, intestinal infection and these benefits can be common to competitor number 2 however for competitor number 3 it aids in digestion it does not say that in, it enhances natural resistance to intestinal infection. Here in Yakult, it is very honest that it only aids in digestion. And as far as product volume is concerned, uh, Yakult has, you know, uh, 2 ml difference. But uh, if you will also write here the price, it can also be included as a product feature. You include the price. You can include uh, many more aside from these four existing features. You can do that. Okay. So here are the steps when you want to do a competitor analysis. So number one is assessment competitor's current objective. First variable or attribute is growth. Increasing the brand's units or market share with profits condition being secondary. So, in terms of growth, they are uh, more uh, they are more in terms of growth, this competitor could be more on brand awareness, but you know, market share with profit is just secondary. The primary is brand awareness. So, example is cut in price, increase advertising expenditures, increase promotional activities. So, you can also do that as a matrix in assessing competitors' current objective. Hold or consideration brand is losing market share. No? You can do a matrix on this. Harvest or milking. What is this terminology? It is about profit is paramount relative to market share. Meaning to say, if this is your market share, and of course, you want to occupy this market share, of course, you are also uh, associated with profit. Step number two is assessment also about your competitors' current strategies and what are the important attributes. Number one is the target market selection for strategy, supporting marketing mix, pricing, promotion, place, product service capabilities. Step three is differential advantage analysis. What is this? Ability to conceive and design about 
new product development? Uh, is there an opportunity for a new product that you want to develop or the ability to produce? No? Production capabilities uh, like economies of scale, ability to deliver service using uh, your supply chain or distribution management or your marketing management. Do you need intermediaries or channels so that your product or service can reach immediately to customers? Right? Ability to market, this is access to distribution channels. Ability to finance your resources, uh, capability, ability to manage the, <coughs> the reputation and integrity of your uh, internal key managers. Step four is the prediction of future strategies. So you have to rely on your secondary data and probably try to imagine and simulate no, a role play. Different managers play the roles of product managers for the competitors and develop competitor action scenarios. So this time you are trying to you know, uh, go out of your comfort zone like uh, installing, uh, using your key managers to be a overlapping or lateral to your different product items and product mixes, uh, using them as your product managers, multitasking. And for your assessment for this module number three, you are going to conduct a competitor analysis of your chosen product. Of course, use the format provided. It should be submitted and presented in school book. It should be computerized. And of course, you have to cite your references and review of literature according to APA format. Of course, your writing should be also in APA format. So, that's it to complete our module 3 discussion about competitor analysis so as a summary we need to understand our competitor uh, we need to understand their strength weaknesses opportunities and strengths because we want to outperform our competition and at the same time it is not only competitor analysis that uh, we are directed but we are also mandated to do also a customer analysis and we should also understand our uh, strength and weaknesses and internal opportunities and threats as a company. Doing customer analysis and competitor analysis gives us a strategic opportunity to make a very competitive strategic marketing plan. Okay? So that's it. Thank you for your thank you for listening. Keep safe and always follow health protocols. Thank you.